Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. <clears throat> Whoops, and I do not have my pen working yet. And we are now on to part B of 3.1. Sorry about that. Um, a mole is a fundamental definition of the amount of material, so this is how many particles in a mole. So this is the grouping we use, kind of like we use a dozen for donuts or a gross for bottle rockets or something like that. Gram atomic mass of a mole of sodium is, if you look at your periodic tables, that would be 22.99. So the periodic table will tell us the atomic masses. What is the mass of 1.76 moles of magnesium cyanide? Well, first you need to know what magnesium cyanide is. Magnesium is plus 2, cyanide is minus 1. So canceling the charges, MgCn taken twice. Okay, so if I have 1.76 moles of magnesium cyanide, then what I want to do is get out of moles of magnesium cyanide and go into grams of magnesium cyanide. So if you remember we did conversions and we had to cancel whatever unit was on top, there's some canceling it, um, and these things have to equal each other. So one mole equals... I go to the periodic table for magnesium, 24.31, yep, 0.31, plus, so I have 24.31, plus I have two carbons, that's 24.02, and then I have two nitrogens, which is 28.00, I add all those up. So I'm just going to the periodic table, adding up two carbons, and adding up two nitrogens. And I have 76.33. So then I take 1.76 times 76.33. And Mr. Calculator tells me it's 134.3 grams of MgCn taken twice. Easy peasy. How many atoms total are in 2.50 grams of barium hydroxide? So this is tricky because barium hydroxide is not an atom. Barium hydroxide is that plus 2. So I'm going to start with 2.50 grams of BaOH taken twice. H2 grams of barium hydroxide. Now, you'd think I could go right into atoms, but I can't. I have to always go through moles. So moles is my big converting buddy here. And number one is going to go with moles, and then I have to find the mass of barium hydroxide. So barium on the periodic table is 137.27, and then I have... I have two oxygens, and I have two hydrogens. I'm going to add all that up. So 137.27 plus 32 plus 2.02 is 171.29. Then I don't want moles, I want atoms. So I'm going to get out of moles of barium hydroxide. And you'd think I could go right into atoms because that's typically it, but you can't. You have to go first into formula units. Formula unit, remember, is the particle of an ionic compound. You could call it a molecule here, it would slide. Um, so then the number of particles in a mole, if you recall, is that magical number of 6.02 E23. Now you think, okay, I'm done, but I'm not in atoms yet. So now I'm going to have formula units. I'm going to get rid of it and go into atoms. So one formula unit, or one molecule-ish, would have a barium, two oxygens, two hydrogens. Two, four, five. And then I ask my calculator the answer. 2.50 divided by 171.29 times 6.02 E23 times 5. And I get 4.35 E23 atoms. To go over that again, let's go to highlighter land. This is given, okay? This number right here came from the periodic table, right? So I cancel my grams, and I always have to go through moles, right? So moles are my big converting thing. So moles will take me into particles, right? Now, because it's ionic, I use a formula unit. I could have used molecules, and molecules isn't right, but it's used often enough. And then I need to know how many atoms are in there. So I count them off. One, two, three, four, five. That's where that came from. See if I can get back to a regular pen. Percent composition empirical formula. Percent composition, percent by mass of each element in a compound. 
this is actually quite easy. What's the percent of nitrogen and ammonia? Ammonia is NH3. So what I need to do is find the masses of each. So again, periodic table land. Nitrogen is 14.00. Each hydrogen, or three hydrogens, are 3.03. .03. My total is 17.03. Okay. Percent nitrogen, so percent is always part of our total. 14 over 17.03 times 100% if you're one of those people. And 14 divided by 17.03 is 82.2%. Okay, just like what you do to find your grades. An empirical formula is the simplest formula of a compound. It's just a ratio. So, for example, C6H12O6 is glucose. I could reduce that. That's not an empirical formula. That would be CH2. Oh. Okay. Michael rambles three times more than Aaron, and Charlie rambles 30 times more than Michael. So it would be M3E. Charlie rambles 30 times more than Michael, so that would be... Charlie would be... 90. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that would be the reduced ratio for Aaron Hardly Rambles at all. <gasps> Did I do that wrong? More than Michael. <gasps> yeah, this one's wrong. Ooh. To find the empirical formula from data. Now, uh, you can read this and all. What I want to focus on is going through moles. So what you do is you take your percentage and go to moles. And then you just work it into a whole number. samples. Empirical formula for a compound that is 24.3% carbon. Now, if it's 24.3% carbon and 4.1 hydrogen and the remainder is chlorine, I just assume I have a 100 gram sample. It makes my life way, 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 way easier. So I'm going to start with 24.3 grams of carbon, 4.1 grams of hydrogen, and I figure out the rest. So 100, 100, minus 24.3 minus 4.1 equals my percent of chlorine. So that's 71.6 grams of chlorine. Now I'm going to turn each of these into um, moles. So one mole goes on top. And then these grams, remember little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. I do want to point out that this is the single atom form, not the molecule form. I know it's diatomic, but we don't diatomic diatomize those guys. 24.3 divided by 12.01, 2.0233, 4 4.1 divided by 1.01. 4.0594, 71.6, hey, get out of there, divided by 35.45, 2.0197. So if I was an idiot, I would say, oh, it's C2.02, H4.059, Cl2.0197. But in reality, we want to make these whole numbers. So this one's pretty clear. It's going to be um, the smallest whole numbers possible, 2, four, you know, one, you know, two, four, two. But we divide by the smallest one, 2.0197, and you get a more reduced number. Uh, two point, whoops, 2.0233 divided by 2.0197, and I get 1.001. If you don't call that one, your undos are wound up too tight. 4.059. Divided by 2.0197, we get 2.009. Even though it would be 2.01, that's 2. Of course, that's 1. So the formula is CH2Cl2. No, CH2Cl. Because the uh, erase 1, 2, 1. There you go. The molecular formula is the exact formula of the molecule unreduced. Aaron rambled twice, Michael rambled six times, Charlie rambled 970 times, and that would be 62973. So it's unreduced, although that, I believe, is relatively prime, which would be a bad example, but still. To find the molecular formula from data, find the empirical formula. Hey, we just learned how to do that. Take the molecular mass, that means the big mass, 
divided by the empirical mass, that's the mass of what you just found for the multiplier. Empirical formula found before had a molecular mass of 199. What is the molecular formula? So I forgot what we had. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes, I did. CH2Cl. Sorry. So if I had CH2Cl, I need to find the mass of that. Carbon is 12.01. Two hydrogens are 2.02. .02, and one chlorine is 35.45. Add those up. 8, 4, 9, 4. 49.48. So I'm going to take my big number, 199, and I want to know how many 49.48s fit in my big guy. Now, if you notice, my choices are going to be like C2H4, Cl2, C3, H6, Cl3, etc., etc., etc. So I want to figure out how many of those fit. 199 divided by 49.48, so it's really 200 divided by 50. And I get 4.02, and that's 4, okay? So that means I'm going to take CH2Cl times 4, and I get C4H8Cl4. Bang. Review. Hey, hey, always go through moles, always go through moles. Empirical formula moles, molecular formula moles. We're going to find the formula of a hydrate. <laughs>